There you go. All right. So go ahead and start and introduce yourself. You know, tell me where you're from, what do you do and and how do you uh, come into this business? Uh, well, my name is Marcus Graham, I'm owner of Joiner Vending. I am, from, I am from Rochester, New York, but I currently reside in you know, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I, I own a vending machine company. I've been doing this for about four and a half years. And we started off as a side hustle, has became a you know, major part of my life. All right. So like I said, I, I came across your video. It was on CNBC. Uh, what was it? CNBC Make It. It's like a channel for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And there was like almost, it was about 700,000 views. How did you end up uh, getting on something like that, you know, on a platform that big? Uh, it was organic. Um, someone from there saw me on Instagram or Twitter, one of my social media um, pages. Um, I talk about the business often. I give out little, you know, tips and, you know, advice, you know, little hacks and things of that nature. And they saw it. Uh, initially, I guess someone had emailed me about it and I didn't see the email and you know, I didn't respond to it. Um, so they ended up calling me, you know, probably about a week later, like, hey, and I thought it was like, I thought it was some BS. Like, oh, get out of here. CNBC not calling me. Um, but um, they were like, hey, look, we're going to shoot you another email to take a look at it. So I went and looked at the page. I'm like, oh, this is legit. Um, they said that they found me because they saw me, uh, my story in the Business Insider. Um, so they was like, yo, we really want to take that and make it just bigger. You know, I put in a video. Um, and I was all for it. But even the whole time, I thought it was like, man, this ain't really, this ain't real. Um, until until I actually, even when I filmed it, I'm like, man, it's probably not even gonna come out. It wasn't until um, until a you know a guy sent me a text like, hey, it's up, and me and my fiance we just pulled it up on the TV. It was like, oh, this is real. Yeah, CNBC, they their niche is kind of like in the entrepreneurial space. You know what I'm saying? They have that show that I used to watch. What was it called? Uh, with um, Mark Cuban and and what are those other shows? Shark Tank, yeah. yeah. So they they're really business, man. I, I would have I would have probably done the same thing, man. I would have probably hung up, thinking <laughs> that it was some kind of scam. Did they send a, a camera crew over there where you were at? And uh, yeah, they sent a camera crew. We were supposed to film in Philly and in and in Maryland, but we ended up just shooting um in my Philly, you know, locations and you know things of that nature. So the, it was just one guy. He came with his camera and stuff like that. Um, All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it was just one guy, and. Um, we just filmed for a couple of days. I was like, man, I never want to be an actor. <laughs> yeah, I would have been nervous, man. Listen, you say you're from Rochester and you just mentioned Philly and, and what was the DC? Is that where you have your machines? Yeah, so Rochester, I don't have any machines there. That's where I'm from. That's where I spent all of my life until I was 27, pretty much. Um, I moved to Philly, stayed at Philly for stayed in Philly for three years. That's where I grew my business. And I, once my sister came down, had everything running because she works for me. Um, once she was able to take over, you know, my locations in Philly and Delaware, um, I moved to Maryland. You know, I moved to Maryland. I've been in Maryland for actually a year now. Um, yeah, I think like two days ago makes a year. Yeah, I moved to Maryland a year ago on the 28th. All right, so I have a uh, I have a few questions. Well, I have a bunch of questions I want to ask you. I want to start by asking you, like, what made you get into the vending machine business? Uh, well, place? I had a friend who was in the business. Um, he suggested that I to grab a couple machines. Um, I we were supposed to come together when I'm, I moved to Philly because he lived in Philly. We were supposed to put some money together to buy real estate property, and he was like, "Oh, you know, we don't have enough yet, but in the meantime, to buy a couple machines. You know, stay active." You know, so I'm like, all right, I'll grab a couple of vending machines. You know, I didn't really think nothing of it other than just a little side hustle. You know, I used to sell candy in high school. Um, you know, I was the class president. I organized our senior trip, you know, by selling candy from Sam's Club. So I'm like, all right, it'll be the same thing, just, you know, on the vending machine. I didn't think anything major of it. I didn't think about making a lot of money. I just thought it was just something s small and cool. Um I mean, yeah, little did I know. <laughs> well, you see, that's how it starts, man. Like, I have a, a bunch of people on my channel. They're, they're entrepreneurs like me and you, man. And and I always try to look for things that, you know, where you can start out with a small investment. You know, it's not like a brick and mortar where you have to pay 100 grand, 200 grand, you know, to build the, 
you know, get equipment. You know, this is something that you could probably do with a, a thousand dollars or so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So um, so how much did you make in your first year? You said you start you said you started out with forty five hundred dollars, right? That was your first initial yeah, investment. Paid, yep, I'm sorry. I paid about forty five hundred for everything, car readers, machine product delivery, my first location. Um I didn't make much at all my first year, probably like a couple thousand at most. Cause it, for my first few months I made only like, I was, it was grossing like $60 a month between both machines. Um, okay. And eventually that grew. Um, when I did, I like, you know, once I got used to it being there and I would do little things like put a dollar or put a scratch off on the back of some of my snacks to create some buzz, you know, to bring attention to it. Um, so, by the time I took that out, you know, right, I think like a week before the pandemic, um, it was like it was making 250 a month. But I didn't make a lot my first year at all. My first year really was about really just learning and being a business owner for the first time, you know, being like the first business owner in my family. So you went through it. I mean, it's always hard when you don't, you know, when you first start and, you know, you're learning the curve. So you say you didn't make hardly anything. And what do you make now? Today in 2022, what do you make a year now? What is your growth? Oh, man. The machines, my machines are going to earn about, like, let me see, my business is going to earn like half a million this year. <laughs> so you went from nothing to half a million. And how, how long was that that learning curve? Like how many years between the first year till now? When was did you start? Two. Two. Two years. So two years. So you went from zero to half a million in two years. No, no, four. I'm sorry. Well, it'd be four years because it was 20, February 2018 to... 2018. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah four. But, man, that's still good, man. Yeah, they slowly, it progressed and then boom, it shot up um, the year of the pandemic. Um, it shot up. And I know people, a lot of people think that, you know, you know, all these things closed and stuff like that, but it actually was like, and I'm not saying that to like, you know, you know I'm, people lost their lives. I'm just saying specifically for a business, for me, it was a blessing in disguise and being able to identify all of these locations that were in need, that when they were relying upon people going here or going there and it was no longer there. So like, oh, let's find something, you know, that we can keep in house. Like that's, that really helped me grow a lot. Um, and making sure I got on in front of people um, while everybody was at home. So you started out with two machines, right? And mm -hmm. how many machines do you have now? Um, two, uh, I want to say 21, but I'm, it's going to be 23 because I'm going to put some machines in somewhere next. 23 week. machines? That's yeah. not bad, man. That's not bad at all, man. Now I would have, the, I've, sold, I've sold, like if I never sold machines or anything of that nature, sold some of my spots, I would have like 50 or 60 machines. But I didn't want that many um, I wanted to, I really wanted to focus on quality over quantity um, right by getting very very high earning locations yeah you better then make yeah and then when and I have a staff in different states that it's easier for them to maintain if they only have to go to one spot that earns five or six thousand dollars a month they go there maybe three four times a week but they spending two hours a day during that whole thing versus if it was seven spots that made 5,000. Now they got to be over here, be over here, you know? So um, people will be like, dang, ain't no way you can make X amount off of just 20 machines. It's like, you can, you know, if you, like you get some big spots and just can. Location is everything, you know, for every business, not just vending machines, for every business. Yeah. Um, so aside from the obvious, like what do you need to, to start a vending machine business besides, you know, the machines? Uh, <laughs> I, I always try to like um people have different strategies. For me, what what worked for me was establishing my company as a that you know looks legit. Um, mm -hmm. So I came out the gate with a website. You know, right. I have my you know t-shirt on, my logo, my business cards. I had a you know phone service that's answering. So when you know a company, let's say they call, they were here answering service. Welcome to them, blah 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 vending. Um, you know, I will have a packet, a proposal when I go and meet with them, you know, so I will present myself as a like a legit business, even before I had a single machine, because yeah. when you're competing with these bigger companies, you know, you want to add, you know, worst 
um, fit in and that best stand out. You know what I'm saying? You don't want them to be able to look and say, oh, this part person is running a vending machine company from their basement. It's just them. No, you don't want to seem that way. So that's how I um, got into it. You know, um, you definitely want to be able to have perseverance. Like it might seem cliche, but it's true. Because if you're like, you're going to, if you cold call, you're going to call a bunch of places and a lot of places are going to say no. So our places are just going to hang up. You know, the, the moment right. that somebody, like in America, we're trained to hear a pitch and it's no. It can be the best thing ever that can happen to them, but it's just no because we're ears are trained for that. Um, so you have to be, you know, you have to, you know, be persevere. You got to keep going with that. Um, I always suggest people, you know, send emails because people are, especially to the people who are in charge, who are important when it comes to making decisions, like they're going to read their emails more than, you know, being on the phone. Yeah. They don't really have the time for that, you know. And then when you have to email, a lot of us in, in the world are visual, you know. So if I see this stuff, you know, I, okay, I can see. I, I get a free vending machine. I don't have to service it. I don't have to pay for anything versus, hey, man, would you want to try a vending machine? And you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, like you know, like, you got to give them the benefits, man. And I yeah. always, man, you know, most of my viewers, they they're into the transportation business, you know, transport and freight, you know, in box truck or cargo van. And I try to have the, I, I hit hard. Like, you know, I tell them, you know, you got to have your branding in place uh, from the beginning. You know, I see your shirt. It says joiner vending, mm -hmm. you know, it's real small. You know, it's very important. Two words, you know, most of the, the biggest companies in the world, you know, they're either one word or two word companies. Uh, you got to have a website and I'm trying to, show them how to build a website but it's hard to teach somebody that that's never done it you know so i'm trying to figure out the easiest way to build their website man and i think that's important you just hit it all on the nail man the branding uh the website you know everything has to be professional man mm -hmm. yeah I so I, I appreciate you saying that man yeah you gotta yeah. present yourself as a big business and then as a business yeah if you're you know you're a business you have to act like a business that's what i always tell people you know act like a business you know some people think saving a couple bucks here and there you know if you're a business just act like a business get everything you need you know yep. get the number right get the office space uh you know for you you have a warehouse no for your your vending no, machine i don't know because we buy we buy the machines third party and put them in there you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? so whether so you they, don't even have to store them no we're not the storm like it's, it's not even like i have like four vending machines on my garage right now that's going to be going places um but for the most part no because this is important. You you want to you want to buy machines um, specific to the locations they're going to be in. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you know one mistake that people make all the time is they buy a vending machine and say, "All right, now I'm gonna find somewhere to put it." But the problem with that is, let's say you bought a snack machine, but they need a drink machine, right. or you know, say you bought a snack machine, or they need a combo machine where it's half and half, or they did need the snack machine, but they need a machine that's bigger than that or smaller than that. It might not fit through the door. It may not look aesthetically pleasing. Like it's all of these things to where you have to go and assess that location and then say, I right, bet this machine is going to work right here. I'm going to need a machine that's going to be around this size. That's going to have this capabilities. That's going to look this way. Um, so like that's 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 important, you know, so never like, you know, I, don't, I always tell people don't buy no machine until you have a place to put it. You know what I'm saying? You okay. don't want to buy a machine and put it in the storage or, you know, you got to pay for it to be in storage. Now it's counterproductive. Your point right. of having that machine was to make money, not to be spending money to have it, you know? That's right. All right. So here's another question. Um, you know, the little small candy machines, you know, they have them on the, you know, the barber shops. They're mm -hmm. like four little things. Do you, do you are those things even worth getting or just going straight to the big machines with the sodas, the chips and and the, the big snacks? I mean, um, it's a small entry to get in, you know, a little machine you can buy. I think no, I think that's just still a good entry. You know, like you. You do that and use that money to buy you a full size machine if you can. You, you know can what I'm saying? That. Like, again, like if you learning like how to be a professional because that's important like i i like people really don't understand that like you have to learn you have to be a professional at all times you know what i'm saying like and some people don't know they don't come right away you know but with the candy machines you're probably stocking them once a month you might one day out the month you go to all your spots and you stock all those things and you know the best spots make about 60 70 dollars a month but you but typically people have like 50 or 60 of those little candy machines. of the little machines you know i've seen people take that take the money they made from that um 
and buy a full size vending machine or sell that, you know, to do that. Um, so either or is great. I think if you have children, you know, you know, younger people in your life, you love something like that's a great thing for you to even get them started with. You know what I'm saying? You can get them making some money off of that. You know, they earn in 60, $70 a month, you know, off of being an entrepreneur and having something for them to do. Um, so whether yeah. you're an adult or if you have a child or you want to, you know, or if you're, you know, a child or you're a teenager or whatever, and you, you know, I'm going to listen to this, like that's a low entry point and you can make some money and save money to, you know, to go into full line vending. All right. Yeah. Cause that's, uh, it's a good entry point. Like you said, it's, it's slow to get in. And, and most of all, you learn how to be an entrepreneur, learn the business. But, you know, like I said, it's about 60 a month. So it's a numbers game. You know, you would have to buy to make any real big money. You would probably have to set up a lot. Yeah. Um, so what type of vending machines do you have that most of most of that you do that you sell? Uh, I have. I have a lot of um, combo vending machines. I have combo vending machines, half and half. And a, a big part of that is because the locations that I have them in um, are 24-7, 300 to 500 people there. So they be mm -hmm. want food, you know, so being able to have, you know, sandwiches and cheese and crackers and things of that is important for those spots. Um, I just put in my first, like, little mini market machine in one of my spots, and that's because they want a salad. And, you know, whatever that spot want, they, you know, they can get because – um, it's, it's, this is my first month with them, and it's like, like $5,000 this month, you know? And that's what some hiccups, you know, with the machine not working for a few days and things of that nature. But, you know, pretty much just traditional drinks and snacks with those, you know, four locations having, like, food items in there, like pastas and ramen. Pastas. Yeah, like, we got, the, you know, the pasta dinners, you know, you got Alfredo, you got turkey and dressing you got chicken breast like we put those stuff in there and they, they kill them all you know so you go from from sodas to uh snacks all the way to serving food you know lunches maybe mm -hmm. even dinner or some of that stuff yeah the biggest hit man like we the biggest hit was in my newest location um we didn't have something that we normally would put in there you know so we didn't have sandwiches We're like damn it we need to put something in here because there's no sandwiches right we can't find them um so what we did was like i right, forget let me just i just grabbed some cheese and crackers um from bj's you know that's like i, I didn't want to put lunchables in there but it was like kind of shaped in the same thing i put them in there as a way to just fill them until the, you know i can get some sandwiches man we came back there two days later all three rows was gone we was like, oh, we we on to something. So we proceeded yeah. to put those in all of our spots. Same thing. Numbers have gone through the roof. Like so so you can put anything in those things as long as it, it fits and it dispenses. Yep, as long as it fits. And some it's different coils, you know, so it's different yeah. coils fit different things, but as long as it's in there and it can just, yeah, it you can you can put as much stuff in there as you want and you know try things out. Um sometimes the place will give you a suggestion, you go with it, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Um, but you, you definitely want to try to put different things in there. We we stumbled upon a lot of different stuff. Like, man, we ain't got no orange soda, man. Uh, to fill it up, let's just put this peach tea in there. Now peach tea is one of our main staples now. Like, they cannot get enough of it. Well, that's, that explains why you're doing so good now, because you have to be able to experiment and, and try different stuff. Usually people, when they do vending machines, they'll go with what sells, and sometimes the machines will be empty for a week before they even tend to it. And so that, if you're willing to change it up, man, I mean. Yeah, that's, listen, that's a good thing you just said about, you know, they might not restock for a full week and it's empty. If you see a place like that, that is your cue to take that location. Just, that because, is, just because a company has vending machines in there does not mean they're happy with it. My biggest, right. best vending machine locations I have right now was me um, um, taking a location from a vendor who wasn't getting the job done. And when I got this, like, like I said, this one spot, um, as of right now, has made ninety one hundred this month. Just only two machines, ninety one hundred this month. So by the end of the day, it'll be about ninety two, ninety three hundred. I mean, it's probably more like ninety four hundred. But we had a full day where it was no cars, readers was on. Um, but when I got this spot, they was like, "Yeah, man, the person, you know, just don't be stocking enough. You know, they don't come out often." And I thought it was gonna be a good spot. I'm thinking like two thousand a month. You know, yeah. So see it doing. 92, 9,300 this month. And I'm like, bro, 
and you wasn't keeping up with this? Yeah. Because like, my profit wow. margin, you're going to ask about profit margins, but if I'm profiting about 60, 62%, I don't pay any commission there. That's over $5,000 a month of profit from two vending machines. You know what I'm saying? My wow. person, my, my life, my personal bills are $5,000. You know, I price yeah. my high. So it's like, yo, people drop the ball and stuff all the time. So uh, just because you see a place with a vending machine, it don't necessarily mean that they're happy with the services. It's an opportunity because that's what separates the entrepreneurs and the go-getters from everybody else. Because from what I see, man, in, in vending machines, it's always the same snacks. It's always the same boring, dry stuff. And if you're willing, like you said, if you're willing to uh, experiment and put different things and cater to different areas, you know, like something in a hospital, you know, you would probably you probably wouldn't need snacks. You would probably need real food in there. You know, because people spend you know the whole day there. So you have to be able to, uh, how you say, accommodate the area that you have your machine in, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good, man. I I appreciate the the information with that stuff. So, all right. So, what is like the bare minimum to start with, like like a machine? You know, like like an investment. You say you, you invested forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, but uh, that wasn't like that wasn't even my best investment because. Um, the, um, I like a year and a half later is when my business blew up because I ended up getting a great location at that, like amazing location. Um, and I paid 1000 for the drink machine, 700 for the snack machine, $300 a piece for car readers. So that's 2300 and then the product was probably about $400, but I always round up, you know, but let's say $500. That's, you know, and then I put coins in both machines. So I put about $50 worth. So that's $2,900. And then we delivered, me and my friends delivered the machines. So we just rented a truck from Penske. So that cost us about $100. And, you know, they didn't charge me delivery fee because we was friends. Don't, so we did that. So it was $3,000 for that. It made $3,000 the first month of the machines on there, you know? So that was crazy, but like, you can get machines for that cheap. You know what I'm saying? Like I've gotten a combo machine for 1800 before car reader on it, or the 2200. Um, you can get stuff for way cheaper than that. It's just that the, the, the thing is being cheap is expensive. So can you explain that? So you may start off paying this cheap amount, but three, four months later, you're going to have to pay more because it was cheap. So now let's say you, you know, you pay $900 for a cheap machine. And then now three months later, uh, you know, something bad messed up because it's a cheap machine. Now you got to pay another four, five hundred dollars for that. Dang, you did. Fixed. And then a few months after that, this happened. So you got to pay another $300. And before you know it, you don't pay it about three thirty five hundred for this machine, but during the time, you know, you're missing out on sales or the location. Right. You say, "Hey, man, this machine is a piece of you know trash." So yeah. was, as opposed to, and maybe paying seventeen hundred, you would have got a better, you know, you would have got a better bang for your buck. Or paying yeah. two thousand, you would have got a better bang, and you would make more money in the long run because you're not dealing with repairs, you know what I'm saying, and your, your machine being out of commission, and you're also not spending more money on repairs. Right. Um, so when people say get in the business for $1,500 or less, they're not wrong, but it's kind of, I personally feel that they're misguiding you because um, being cheap is going to be expensive, man. I've, I've My $1,000 machine, my drink machine, I'm telling you right now, I mean, I got my money's worth because the location was making three thousand dollars a month, you know. So that machine mm -hmm. itself was making fifteen hundred a month, or at or at times two thousand. But two months after having that machine, the compressor blew. That's the refrigeration. You know what I'm saying? Luckily, yeah. I, a guy fixed it for me for cheap. But if I'd have got it fixed for what it's supposed to be, that'd be eight hundred dollars that I had to get it fixed for. But okay, so I got that fixed for cheap, and then. Six months after that, it just the machine completely blew and died. So now I had to pay fourteen hundred dollars for a new for a better machine. Fourteen, fifteen. They gave me a discount because I bought machines from them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I essentially paid for two vending machines within one year when I could have paid a better price and had that for a longer period of time. All right. So you kind of answered two questions that I had. Uh, one of them was refurbish. What would you do? Refurbish is that you know worth buying or buying them brand new? 
And the other one was delivery. Can one person deliver it on a dolly or do you need more people? I mean, there's two questions there. Um, I, I would um, refurbish machines. I always suggest that for like small vendors um, okay. because price is still important. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to get a brand new machine for a location that ain't going to be making X amount of dollars. For every location that I – like I only have one location right now where both machines are brand new. And that's in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? In Detroit. Big, Wait a minute. You're all over the place. You got yeah. machines in. How do you travel? I mean, what do you do? You you, you go in the truck and you drop them off in these locations? The, the location makes $6,000 a month, so I have staff now. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to yeah, interrupt. Yeah. But I got those, you know, because it's, I knew the kind of money it was going to bring in. It was yeah. worth it. I needed them to be delivered. They needed them to be delivered fast and brand new machines. So it worked. But from every place else, my snack machine is always refurbished. My my cold machine is always newer because of those. It's more moving parts with refrigeration and things of that nature. The more expensive things if things go wrong, you know. Um, but I always recommend you get a refurbished machine. You know, refurbished machine, not used like it just it's been used. You know, refurbished because it's been it's been updates made to it and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, so, it's different. You know, not like buying on Craigslist. Refurbished, it goes back to the company and they actually fix it. Yeah, yeah. So I recommend refurbish unless you unless you like, yo, man, this location, I think it's going to make me four figures a month. I yeah, unless you hit one of those spots, man. Then you want to get a new machine because you don't want any from the day you step in it. You don't want any problems to go wrong for a period of time, because that's one thing that I've had even with my refurbish. Sometimes is that initially it could be something wrong day one. And it might be something minor. It's just that I don't you know, I'm newer to it, I don't really know it, but. You don't really want that to happen day one having a machine. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, like we can't. You don't want it. that downtime. You know what I'm saying? The credit card reader ain't really working right now. The coins ain't being accepted. The cash ain't going on. The door ain't closing. Like this is the first week. It's like, oh, like it, it looked bad for business. You know? It does, and it is bad for business because they have to run 24 seven. Man, that's just money just leaving the table. Correct. So, yeah. And so to start out with refurbish, it would be like a, a new spot. But if you have a money hitter, like you say, you have, you know, four or five grand, then go with brand new. And there's places like in there's places like um, vending concepts, AM equipment, e-vending that you can get new machines and pay and finance them. You know what I'm saying? It's fine. If that, you know what I'm saying? If you don't have the money, but if you think it's a good spot um, or if you have the money, but you want to keep some money in your pocket, finance it. You know what I'm saying? Let the location pay for it. You know, and maybe you have money to invest somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So if you are in a position where it's like, look, man, I really don't want these, you know, um, refurbished machines. I want to make sure from day one my stuff is going well. Do that. You know what I'm saying? Get those refurbished machines. They're delivering them for you. You're going to need a team to help you get them off the pallet. But that's an option. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that everybody that get into it ain't going to have $2,000 or $3,000 right away. So maybe you are paying $200 a month for these you know, machines. And, you know, if you're able to make $600 a month and let it pay for it, that's 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 that that can be the move move for you. So do you recommend always get a combo food and drinks in the same machine? You know, never one of the other. No, I use combo machines like I've used combo machines for locations that have like less than like um like 75 people, you know what I'm saying? 50, if you have like 50, 60 people, I do a combo machine. Um, I don't want to have a two full size machines for a spot like that. Um, because typically they're gonna you wanna you wanna condense it so that you know they're gonna eat and drink the stuff that they're really gonna get. You have a full size machine here, you have to keep stock, a full size machine there, you gotta keep stock, and you have to buy a product that you know you might not really need. Um, you can double up or triple up on it as much as you want, but it, it would make more sense to just condense it into one machine. Um, but like I said, I have a cold machine. I have the combo machines. I use it as a cold machine for my big locations. You know what I'm saying? So I remove a snack. I might remove a, a candy roll. There's a, you know, there's always a candy roll in your machines. I remove the candy roll at an extra drink roll and I use the top two shelves for food. And I still have a full snack machine, but now I have three rolls of drinks. You know, so I use that one as a cold machine you know, for food to go in there and drinks to go in there. Um, so that's that's where I've been. Like, you know, so I have two versions of it, just a combo machine for a small location, not small, but like less than 75 people. 
and a combo machine as a food machine for big spots, 24 seven spots. Cause you know, I don't put food in places that are, that are just regular business things and stuff like that, you know? Um, but for the spots where people are going to be there in the evening, cause people going to be eating right. uh, stuff like that. They don't, people don't want to go outside when it start getting dark, you know, people are not going to be running out. You know, people are going to go get food and stop and grab something or get a doctor's appointment during the daytime. But them spots where you got an evening, that's where you're going to make a lot of your killing. And that's where you want to put those, you know, those food items in there. So what is like your biggest money maker between the, the drinks, the, the snacks and the food? Like what brings you the most money uh, out of all those, the drinks? So it's yeah, always a drink. Yeah. Yeah. Nine times out of 10 vendors going to make the most money out of their drinks. Um, out of the drinks. Now that, that doesn't mean that they're going to profit the most from that. That just means that that's for dollar for dollar is going to make the most. For me, I profit like almost the most from there too because I don't use um, I don't use twenty ounce bottles of, of sodas. I use sixteen ounce bottles now. When I started, I was using twenty ounce bottles, but sixteen ounce bottles are so much easier to obtain, and there's a higher return of investment in it because even with inflation, sometimes places ain't going to want to pay two twenty. They're not gonna really want to pay two fifty for a bottle, of, you know, of, of soda. You know, what I'm saying you might get your bottle for a dollar ten, dollar fifteen, and you're you're trying to sell it for two fifty. It's gonna be difficult. So you might bring it to two twenty five, two fifteen, two ten. But with the sixteen ounce bottle, I think sometimes they don't even realize the difference in the size because it's a bottle. You yeah. know, what I'm saying? but I might get a bottle for fifty cent, fifty two cent, and if I'm selling it for one eighty five or one eighty. You know? See, a lot of people don't think that way, man. You know, you have to keep you have to keep testing, man, because those bottles are big and those vending machines, they can be three or four dollars a bottle, depending on where you're at. I was at the zoo yeah. in Buffalo, I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, man, it was like five or six dollars for for a bottle of soda. What about the cans like the cans, the cans? What is the most you can charge for something like that? You say you like the 16 ounce. Yeah, I, for the cans, I would do one thirty five. Um but Are for, those even worth putting in there or just do the 16 ounces? I, I would prefer No, I just like, I prefer just the 16 ounces. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I get the vending machines that make it perfectly for those. That's where the combo machines for me work best or, you know, things like that. Like I, I will even convert a combo machine um, and just to a beverage machine. Like it's just so much easier when you have like, when you have the the drinks where, um, where you can stock them, you know, Stock them like chips, like it's, it's different versions of machines. You have the older machines where you put them inside somewhere and it's metal and they got to spin and drop from the bottom. Then you see the glass ones where it's there and then it might just drop forward. But then, you know, you have the, the newer ones. It's like you can put them down in a slot, you know what I'm saying? Put them down in a coil. I like that version better. And if I have a, and I don't even try to do canned drinks, um, I would do the, the the 12 ounce bottle drinks because people like to be able to close the drinks off, keep right. it with the move versus a can. It's like, damn, I got to throw this away. I got to drink it here. You know, so I would, if I, if I have to buy a small thing, I'll buy a 12 ounce bottle versus a 12 ounce can. And I'll charge 135 for it, but I'm probably paying like 35 cents. Yeah, so you have to take it into account, you know, what's what's going to cost you and what's affordable to the people. Because, like I said, some people right. get scared off with the prices. So that makes yeah, a lot yeah. of sense, man. Yeah, and I, some people be like, yo, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to just raise these prices to do that. But, like, man, you want, like, good customer service. You know, I right. you want to put in, like, so because I wanted my return on investment to be a certain number, I made those switches. You know what I'm saying? Like, I made the switch. And so for them, it's... It's cheaper for them. For me, I have a higher return on investment. Um, you know, so maybe in this spot, maybe I make a little less growth per month, but I'm profiting right. more by that, you know, and they're satisfied because it's like, oh, you know, I'm not paying 250 for a bottle, I'm paying 185. It's a smaller right. group, but to them, it is not that much of a big of a difference between 16 and 20 ounce. When well, done. you want to keep churning the, those coils, man. I mean, right. you don't want nobody to say, well, you know what? We'll just wait till we get home or something like that. Correct. Um, so I have another question. This is pretty important. Um, how many hours? It's Well, you make about half a million a year. So 
So it's going to be two questions. How much, how many hours do you spend a week stocking and collecting the money on your machines? And how much would it be, how much time would you think it would be for just, you know, two machines? Because you already um, have a big business. I mean, it's obviously going to take a lot more time. So and, I, um, I only have one location left in the DMV area. And that takes about an hour and a half to do. I want to say two hours, two hours at most. No, because if I drive 15 minutes there, probably at most two hours for that spot that makes a thousand dollars a month. And um, that's for one machine? It's two machines there. Two machines there? Yeah, so you typically, you know, I have a combo machine that, you know, duh, that I just sold for, you know, that I was doing a thousand dollars a month, you know, just one machine. But most of the time, you know, you can. If you're gonna have a machine doing a thousand dollars a month more, you want to have more than one machine because right. you don't have to go there all the time. And yeah. how often do you go to empty out these machines and to restock them? So the machine, like I said, the one that got two machines a thousand dollars a month, once a week. Oh, so you go once a week right. to empty them? Right, but the combo machine, where because it's only one machine, I'm going twice or sometimes it might be three times a week. Um, oh. So, but it would take it would literally take it would. Drive 15 minutes there, pick up the product. That'll take five minutes, and then another 15 minutes for 30, taking 15 minutes. So for that one spot, one machine, a thousand dollars a month, it would take me an hour and a half per day. Well, that's pretty good because I've heard people, you know, saying they'll go once a month. I mean, once every two weeks or once a month uh, to do machines. If you're doing, if you're going three times a week, that means you're making good money. Right. So. You know what I'm saying? But you can go less if you have more machines. So where I was going two times, and sometimes I might have to go three times because it, once it got hot in the summer, it was like, oh, they really going through this Red Bull and stuff. Oh, that's you what know, you I want. Three times, but this spot that I have, um, I only go once a week, you know, and it does really great because they're two full-size machines, like, and, you know, it holds a lot of stuff. So that's pretty good. Like, even the spots in, the, like, Detroit, um, it probably takes them – there. I mean, they're still like they're, they're not as fast as me because I do this. Um, but I ordered, you know, we ordered the product for them ahead of time, you know, so it makes it like that's one thing people need to do. Order your product from Sam's Club, BJ's, Costco's, Walmart ahead of time. You know, while you're at home chilling, you know, you're on your phone, just order the product. So when you go in there, you just pick it up. You're in there for less than five minutes. That means no. you ain't going in there shopping for 15, 20, 30 minutes. You already did that online. You can just come in and pick that John up, head straight to your location. Um, so for my staff in Detroit, it probably takes them like it takes them two hours a day in for them in Detroit. It takes them two hours a day in Connecticut also, and they go three days a week. So it spends about six hours a week for them. Um, and like I said, Connecticut is five thousand in the first month, and Detroit is six thousand a month. You know, so if you're thinking about that, you know, you're doing six hours a week. For that, it's not bad. Eight wow. hours a week. I'm sorry, Detroit, they go four days a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. So eight hours a week for 6000 a month and three and three days a week. Well, so six hours a week for 5000 a month. And my sister, she has more locations in Philly. So she works four days a week, maybe five days a week. Uh, but she has multiple spots where she goes to, you know, so it's a full time job for her. And so she gets paid the most because she works for a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, some people really only work like only do like five hours a week for this stuff. Most. Well, I was going to ask you if you had employees, man, but you're talking about Connecticut and Detroit. That's like six, seven hundred miles. So what do you do? What do you exactly do? Do you like. These are all your machines, mm -hmm. but you you put other people on. Like, do you Correct. pay them? So yeah, pay them you give them a percentage, or uh, I, I pay them a flat rate. I pay them a flat rate. Um, so, but it, it kind of comes out to be like of a percentage because I don't pay any commission at these spots. Like, that's one thing that's important mm -hmm. for me is to not pay commission. You know, one of the biggest misconceptions people always like, no matter what story I do, no matter what I talk about. Oh man, he say he make this, but he not talking about percentage. No, you don't. You more times than not, you're not going to pay commission in this business because you're right. providing a service for them. You know what I'm saying? Well, like they don't want, like they don't really, they're not looking to make money from it. Their biggest thing is they don't want to have to pay for the machines. They don't have to pay for that. Right. Stuff. You know they don't want to maintain them. I, I right. over here. I have a few offices here where I'm at, 
and I was talking to the owner, I think it was a couple of months ago and about putting a machine here. And he was telling me that, oh, you know, the maintenance, you know, it breaks down. Mm -hmm. So I guess he tried it before. And I went online to look, you know, to see what the price is. But I, I really don't know anything about vending machines. That's why I, I contact you to do this, man, because you know exactly what to do. And plus you, you're giving us a lot of game here. Yeah, they don't be wanting that maintenance, man. They don't. No, they don't. They don't want to deal with it at all. Yeah, man. They just the thing is, they just don't like. They just want to be like, hey, we just want to use it. You know what I'm saying? Right. We don't want to deal with it. Like, like I just sold a buddy of mine a location. I promise you guys, that company, this company, they bought their own vending machines on location. They bought them. They don't want to maintain them. Right. They want us to service the machine. So whatever money is made from the machines is our money. You know what I'm saying? They just don't want to service it. So we're getting free machines like, just, just to make money. You know what I'm saying? But people don't yeah. understand it, you know, because like we advertise free vending machines because a lot of places pay companies for to have service for them. And people don't understand why we don't pay commission, you know? Um, but yeah, I pay my staff, you know, I pay them, um, they did you know, pretty, you know, like a percentage. Um, but it's really like it's uh, I estimated to be around like 10, 15 percent of, you know, the money and stuff like that. You know, that's what it kind of kind of average around to be because it's being a little consistent. Um, like I said, my sister is paid a lot more based on the fact that she she works. She does Connecticut and you know, she does Jersey, Philly and Delaware. She does. She does a lot. You know what I'm saying? So she is like a full time salary from it. All right, so I was going to ask you, how do you approach these businesses, you know, where you have your machines? Like you well, said, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Oh, well, the shoe. I mean, is it hard to get in? Do you get more rejections than you do uh, people that actually let you bring your machines in? Not anymore for me because majority of my locations come through them <laughs> coming through my website. So I get emails, I get calls weekly for vending services. I turn down things more than I accept things. You know, yeah, people don't understand how important Google is, man. You know, let the business come to you. And I tell people, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, people just don't, you know, they, they still think that the business card is good. You know what I'm saying? When people, people look up a business, they go online. Yeah, they think they think social media is just like, oh, I, I don't need it because of social media. Not for this, been like, because people will be like, man, vending machine service. Like, people going to look that up. You know what I'm saying? Most people are not going to be looking on Twitter for vending machine services. You know, they're not. They're going to Google Dude, I, it. And for I me. Have a, I have a, you see, because I've been an affiliate marketer for like 15 years, man. So I know what keywords are. are uh, I use them all the time. I, even for the questions here, you know, I look up what people are asking. And I have a dispatch business, brother, and I, I put my website there. I get phone calls from just from the website. You know, I let them call me and then I, I just sort them out and see which ones I want to deal with. So Correct. it's real important yeah. to get a website. I don't know why people don't do it. More people don't do it. Because I'm telling you, man, people be I, I want to say people sometimes try to penny pinch. And that's why I'm saying being cheap can be expensive. Yeah. I put a lot. I pay. I put. Even over time, I continue to pay um, a SEO specialist seven hundred and fifty dollars to update to make these changes and stuff like that. And doing that helped me so much. Like I started to get, I started with just locations in Philadelphia, but then it started being the surrounding areas. Then it, you know, it was Delaware and Baltimore and New Jersey, things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? And and then I was, you know, paying for Google ads. You know, so like those things important i put a lot of money into my website having it redone you know making it more aesthetically pleasing and things of that nature like thinking about that kind of stuff like so i get the majority of my stuff from my website and when they come to me it's pretty much a done deal right because they right. are reaching out to me you know what i'm saying they're not wanting no commission because i'm not pitching them trying to beg them for me to put my machines in there they're like hey can you this is what we want can you help us yeah i got y'all you know, yeah. if it works for me, if not, I might pass it off to someone else. Um, you know, so yeah, the website, man, you know, the website is important. You know, people are still cold call and that's cool. Sometimes you even go in the spot, try to speak to someone. That's the cheapest method. Um, like I said, email, try to email, you know, as much as you can, because they're, they're, they'll see those. Even if you see a place that's under construction or coming soon, like call that number before anybody get a chance to. 
Yeah. Well, seen friend, like, yeah, I seen a friend of mine like I seen somebody like get a location like a laundromat from just seeing it was like under construction. A new walked in there, saw somebody and like, hey man, you know who? Blah blah blah. Got it. Like, hey, talk to them. Done deal. Like, happened, man. Um, even buying vending machine routes or locations, you know, like existing things, you know. So if you go on Facebook Market, you go on Craigslist, things of that nature. Look for somebody selling their vending machine locations or selling their vending machine route and buy an existing thing, you know. And that way you don't have to go through the hard part of pitching and doing all this stuff. You can buy something existing. It's like buying a real estate property with a tenant in there. So day one, you start making your money back. Right away, you don't got to do the hard part of a background check or finding a tenant and all that. It's already there. It's already cash flow, you know. So, um, you know, those are just some of the ways that I suggest people do, um, you know, find them a location. All right. So I have a couple more questions. I'll let you go. I mean, I appreciate all the time that, that you're giving me. I mean, you're giving me a lot of nuggets. And this is something that I might do in the future because I've always had an interest in vending machine for years. I just didn't have the time and mm -hmm. I really didn't, you know. You know, I didn't really, you know, I really, really didn't want to get into it right away because I didn't want to go knocking on doors and of businesses to try to get my machines in. But what everything you just said, uh, how you get business for me, I like people coming to me. That's why I, when you said the SEO, you know, that's search engine optimization, man. I mean, that's how I do everything and paid ads. But, you know, like I, like you said, not everybody uses it. I use it for everything that I do. I, I like I like paid traffic. And I like my websites to come up on the top of Google uh, for whatever service I am, man. So I can relate, man, but I wish people weren't like that. I know a lot of people, they're just too cheap to spend that money. Yeah, and Google right. is a gold mine. I mean, Google makes billions of dollars because they make their vendors billions of dollars. I mean, it's insane, man. So one more question. Uh, what is it? Uh, so what do you tell entrepreneurs that are on the fence? Because a lot of my viewers, they're, they're trying to get into the transportation business. You know, they have a little startup capital because they're thinking about buying vans and, and box trucks. Like, you know, what if they're on the fence? What would you tell them, you know, to just get them to jump into buying a, to get into a vending machine business? Man, you never know what life takes. You know what I'm saying? Like you might jump into the vending machine business and it, it might not even work out for you, but you might have met some people might have met somebody with some business that could help you. You know what I'm saying? Like the same way for me with college, you know, like going to college allowed me to meet some people that put me in a position that got me to where I am today. You know what I'm saying? Because if I didn't go to college, I probably wouldn't have met the guy that I became friends with and then like, oh, fuck, I'm going to move to Philly. Like those things, like that stuff, you know, is real. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't get into the vending machine business to – make a lot of money, you know, um, for me, I was, like I said, it was a side hustle. And then I was like, you know what, my focus should be on eliminating the bill. You know what I'm saying? Instead of saying, I want to make all this money let me just like, all right, man, let me eliminate my phone bill. Let me eliminate, you know what I'm saying? The, you know, the light bill, let me eliminate the, the freaking Wi-Fi. you know, um, like that kind of stuff is where I think people should really look into, you know what I'm saying? And if you look at vending machines like that, I think it would be more helpful, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm blessed to be able to have the location I have. But if I didn't, I would still be blessed if these things were just paying some of my expenses in my life that would allow me to invest in other things, you know? Right. Um, so I think that's, you know, important, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's the best advice I can give someone, you know? It's just that, you know, try some things out. Like, this wasn't, this wasn't my grand plan. <laughs> I wanted to be in real estate. That was it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to be real, estate. No, real estate is still a good thing to get into, but you right. know, on the way there, and you're at a half a million this year. You have any projections for next year or oh uh, well, it should be a lot more than that next year because I'm gonna be taking on more stuff. It's like now knowing that I really be able to hit a million dollars off of this, mm -hmm. like all right, man, I want you know, because I wanted like last year, I'm gonna be honest, last year I wanted it to just stay in this small little amount and it's like i make some really good money you know six figures maybe like a hundred thousand one two hundred you know but it's just me and my sister and we can manage them you know because i didn't want to oversee nobody um but my fiance was like man you can be like the freaking biggest man like and don't like she pushed me and i was like i was scared to grow because i'm thinking about all the stuff that can go wrong like you know people yeah. but i'm um, the best thing that happened is that she challenged me and now I'm in multiple states, man. Like, 
when I, you know, when I think about like, you know, two weeks ago where I hop on a flight and go to Detroit and then get off and then have to come back to Maryland for my machines and then drive over to Philly and then drive over to Connecticut and, you know, and going to these places, you know, you know, cause it's my time. I, I want to check on my business this month. Like it's crazy to think about, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy to think about, but I didn't, I didn't plan for this. It happened because, you know, I took a chance and I was like, man, I just want to be the best at whatever I do. And I'm going to put my, my all into it. If, if it fell, it fell. It's cool. I ain't going to, I'm going to be back where I started. You know what I'm saying? Where here alive with another opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm one of those people that genuinely believe in lessons, not losses, you know? So right. I always say this, man, like I believe that I can get into a fight with like <laughs> Floyd Mayweather. And if I lose, I'm going to say, all right, let's run it back. I know what I did wrong. Yeah. And that's that's irrational, but that's how you got to be sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, that, I grew up poor right? in Cleveland, Ohio. My mom was always the poorest. Wherever we live, we were always the poorest. And, you know, we used to eat free lunches, you know, two or three times a day, every day. And I always told my wife and I've been a serial entrepreneur for like 20 years, brother. And I I mess up a lot. You know, I, I failed a lot, but I'm not afraid to fail. That's the difference. You know, if you're afraid to fail, you're not going to try nothing and you're going to go, uh, you know, work for that paycheck every week which is small and i always tell my wife i'm like look you know we were poor we grew up poor you know if we go poor again we know how to handle it because we're poor all our life you know what i'm saying so it's worth the risk to me that's why i moved to philly that was my mindset i was like i was living in poverty at 27 years old like people look at me and they be like it's like they be like oh man you know it's amazing doing great but it's like i always make sure that i always be like oh listen i'm not far removed from living in poverty, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I had a viral tweet like last month because I was telling people that's 24 and 25, like, yo, don't be thinking like your life is far behind because you know, you don't have like, when I graduated college, I want a big house, family by 25, making this money. Like that was my thing. I went back into poverty after going to grad school. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I didn't get my big break until I was 20, what, 28, 29 years old. You know, I'm 31 going on 32. That's how fast life changed for me. But, you know, all this period of time, I was just working towards something. I told myself, like, man, the worst that can happen is I fell and I go back to being poor, which I've been my whole life like that. That's what I tell my wife. I say we've been there. House money. We've been there. And here's the thing. You know, most people and I'm the same way. You know, I'm a pessimist. Um, I'm always, you know, worried about what can go wrong. I don't know why I'm like that, but I do it anyways. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I do it anyways. And I fell, like I said, I fell. I remember I bought my first website like 15, 16, 17 years. It was a poker site. I didn't make a dime on it, but I, I went into it and I learned how to build a website. So, you know, I learned stuff from it and, and I failed a lot, a lot of different ventures and until a couple of them hit, you know what I'm saying? You have to keep trying, man. You just can't be afraid. And, and this is like something that's, that it's, it doesn't take a lot of money, you know, to get a few vending machines, man. Like you said, you were expecting just to pay a couple of bills and now you're doing half a million and you're probably going to end up doing a million in a couple of years. So you right. can't be afraid, man. I mean, and if I the sell, opportunity is there. And if I, when I, if I sell, man, I want two, three million. <laughs> yeah, man, you could sell the business, man. Online, if you sell a website that's making a thousand dollars a month, you can sell that for 16 times the, uh, the amount that you make every month. See, that's so, why I've been, yo, listen, I've been trying to, this is a good thing. Like this is, I've been trying to evaluate my website because I'm making this money based on the leads that I've got through my website. So me and my yeah. fiance are trying to figure out like how 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 much would I sell it for? Because it's guaranteed leads, you know what I'm saying? Like my biggest account, you know, which I said made 9200 this month, is also brought me to Detroit and Connecticut locations, but it came through my website. You know what I'm saying? I get these calls. Um I've I've sold a lot of locations that came through my website. Like I probably get like five to ten, you know, per month. It feels like you know. So I was trying like, how do I evaluate that? When you think about you know, well, something like that, you would have to network with other, you know, entrepreneurs like yourself that have vending machines, and yeah, say, that- look, man, I I send you five or ten leads a month. You know what? You know, can you give me a thousand dollars for? It? And then that that'll be it. You know what I'm saying? But you have to network. My, I would think you would probably have to go to, uh, you know, the Facebook and just network with other people, you know, meet other people that are doing the exact same thing that you're doing, but in different areas, you know, and, and sell them the leads. I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, I've, 
I've uh, I've sold leads, but not for business leads. These were uh, internet marketing leads, but that's mm -hmm. what you would do. You would have to network with people doing the same thing you're doing, man. But yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know how much you would evaluate uh, a business, but you know, if it's making five hundred thousand a year, and if you could sell it for two million, you can retire. I could retire for two million, man. I'll. That's what I'm, less, man. I'm telling you right now. I'm looking to do like looking to 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 do that within like two years, be able to get to 2.2, 2.3 million and reinvest. And I've always wanted to buy like, you know, real estate apartment buildings, things of that nature. Uh, so that's, else. that's what my focus is right now, man. Yeah. That's listen, man. It's a smart plan, man. You, you, you say you wanted to get in real estate. This would be a good way to get into it, man. You can do something else. If I can, when I, yeah, when, like I said, when I'm if I can retire in a year or two, dude, I would do it. I don't care, man. And I'll do something else, man. I just, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just thinking too much. So, <laughs> you said you have you have a course already, right? Because I, I went through it the other day, and it's got all kinds of stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna add some more stuff in the next week. I, I didn't like people be asking about the maintenance. I'm like, listen, I want y'all to get to learning and knowing the business before you get into maintenance. Um, but right. I'm gonna add the maintenance part about putting credit card readers on, bill acceptors, you know, CoinMax, so that you don't have to worry about that, you know, paying service calls and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, I have a I have a, a course that teach you step by step um, everything that I've learned, everything that I've experienced. Like this is my own stuff. It ain't I ain't have to look up nobody, <laughs> anything. It's just me. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you have? Um, you have the link or you want me to just tell them the link? No, I have it. I have the link here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put it in the description and there's like, you sent me a, 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 a code, Hustlers, right? Yeah. For uh, 100%, I mean $100 off. Yeah, if you use the code Hustler, um, mm -hmm. you'll get 100%, 100%, $100 off <laughs> on the, uh, the the course, you know? Um, yeah, because I'm looking at the course, bro. There's like eight modules, bro, and there's like, maybe 35, 36 videos. And it has everything, man. It has like the, the script that you would use to ask people. Uh, I see some uh, how to secure a location, um, proposals, agreements. I mean, I see all kinds of stuff here that, so this is everything you need to start from start to finish to, to yeah, do your and, whole business, no? Yeah, and also like, I made sure that it wasn't a long, long, long course because sometimes it'd be long and drawn out. Yeah. Like, no, you want to well, get in there. You want to be able to get right to the point. Let's get this, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and start tomorrow. Like, that's that's the point of my course. You know what I'm saying? It's so that way you can go through it and be like, yo, I'm about to get me a machine or a location tomorrow. Um, a lot of people have started because of it. You know, that's the thing that I'm happy about. I, I've never you know, knock on wood, have, you know, experience like, oh, man, it's the worst. Nah, I don't because I made sure that I wanted to be clear and concise, um, direct to the point. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I do, I ain't going to take you on no journey. Like, we're going to do that here. I can talk about the stuff like that here, but yeah. when you trying to know, it's like, no, we're going to get clear and concise, get right to the point, and I want you to feel comfortable next week. Like, yo, I found something. And I mean, that's what happens. You know, you can take a look at my men, my mentee. Um, Maya, man, she she had an article on the Business Insider that came out a couple months ago. You know, she graduated college in 2020. The following week, she hit me up. You know, she took the course. She wanted to get into business. And a, a few months later, she got her first location in a student apartment that she lived in. So she was in college and she had a student apartment and she didn't move out for a few months. You know, and she went, she walked outside. She told me the story. She said she walked outside came around to come into the front door. She went through the back exit to come around, but she came in with a polo shirt, her polo, you know, her company hat, her business yeah. polo, business cards, and said, hey, man, we don't got, you guys don't have any vending machines. Are you interested? And she got her first thing. Immediately, it's a, you know, $60,000 a year location. You know? 60000 a year for just one location? Well, it's a college dorm. You know, these kids, they don't cook. Mm -hmm. They, they put, you know, they eat in the vending machine. That's how they live, man. Right, and, and she found one. Yep. Yeah, and that's crazy, called, man. She just started to, and then after that, she just started to go. That's what she was like. Uh, you know, I only want student housing stuff, you know, because she has two machines there. She don't have to go to a bunch of different spots. So she has like three or four of those and she's eating. She did six figures in 2021, you know, a year after graduating college. And mind you, I graduated college in 2013. I didn't make six figures until 2020, you know. I was making thirty thousand a year for from twenty thirteen to twenty eighteen. 
Yeah, 30,000 is not much, man. That's why I've always been entrepreneur, man. I've never, I had a job when I was like 18, man. It was like KFC. My first check was like, I think it was like 150 bucks or something, man. And, and I left, I left all the chicken. I just left. I said, hell with this. And I'll never do that again, man. So she did this with all the, you know, from your course, you know, she's, she took your course and then she's following the steps and that's how she's able to make her six figure business. Yeah. Yeah. She did, man. And she, she still calls me to this day and now she's doing her own thing, teaching people on um, which is, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Like my goal is to have her, everyone that, you know, comes from, you know, not under me, but just, you know, go through the process, you know, um, be better than me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, I, like I so many people, people, <laughs> people are haters, man. They don't want people to do better than them. I mean, there's not, that's the way I see it, man. If you do better than me, I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That I means it, it 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 validates everything that I've been saying, you know, you know, so um yeah, man, you know, so like I said, man, you know, the link is in the description. Use the coupon code hustler for a hundred dollars off. Um and you're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna you're gonna love it. Some people are gonna walk away from this and they're gonna be like, Hey Alex, man, I, I started my vending machine business after seeing this video. You know, and that's no, be I hope they do, because I have a lot of entrepreneurs, man. I mean, they tell me all the time and, and I, I'm an analytics person. You know, you, you was talking about SEO. I look at all the analytics. And even though my channel is specific for transportation, the analytics said that they were looking how to start a vending machine business because Google gives you all the information you need. You know, you just have to be able to read it and use it. And that's why I reached out to you, man. And I think this is the best thing that I reached out to you instead of somebody else, because you just gave us a lot of uh stuff that I would have never even thought about, man. I mean, it's just, I appreciate a lot, man. And, I, and it took like an hour, brother. I didn't mean to keep you that long, man, but. No, it's I cool. Guess. Listen, man, when it comes to this, like I, I'm a person, like it's hard to talk to people like, you know, cause people be trying to, you know, DM me, hit me up. And sometimes I don't think they understand that, you know, if I have a lot of followers here or there, that sometimes it's so hard to get to everyone. But with moments yeah. like this where I can, you know, talk and engage and things like that and put it out that they can listen and watch and I'll be able to talk to so many people at once, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I ain't never going to hold back um, in this kind of space, man, because um, it's bigger than me. You know, I know a lot of people didn't even realize that you can own your own vending machine. You know, think about all the years you walk by a machine and think it's just a part of the building, you know? So oh. for me, yeah. Yeah, I've always I've always thought about getting into it. I just never did. You know, I did other stuff, but you know, like I said, uh, where I rent my office is the the guy. He's a pretty good dude, man. So I might even talk to him and just throw one in there just to give it a test. You know? Yeah, not go ahead, man. <laughs> just to give it a test, man. But it's just there's like 30, 40 offices here above. I don't know if I get rich, but I might even give it a test. though. we'll see. I appreciate it, brother, man. I I, I really do, man. And what I'll do is uh. I'll edit the video and I'll upload it to my channel and then I'll, I'll do a couple uh, uh, articles on my blog and I'll SEO it. So that way it ranks on the top of Google and continue to send you some traffic. This is some good stuff, man. I really appreciate it, brother, man. Uh, thank you for having me on, man.